So we're going to get right into it because we don't want to keep the past up, you know, because he I'm already starting to see him not, you know, old people. They be nodding in the middle of things, you know, be mid sentence. They be sitting there, they especially them old preachers, you know, they be up in there, you know, giving the scripture before. The, and they be like, they be like Ecclesiastics too. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's what y'all be doing. <laughs> <laughs> now, Pastor Rush, he said he's married and got six. He, Pastor Russ said that he's married and got six kids. Damn. Hey, man. Well, you know, uh, how, how many boys and girls you got, Pastor? You mind me ask? I actually have. I actually have seven children. I had a daughter, my forty-two-year-old daughter. I had her when I was in college at twenty-one. Mm-hmm. So I have. I have uh, actually four daughters and three sons. Damn. Well, you know, I get rid of, I, I, get rid of I, Kevin Hart, please. I, 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 I feel you. I feel you because I have three boys and three girls. So I have six. Damn. And I've been married for 14 years. Look, look. I'm years. Just, y'all, just, look y'all, didn't, y'all did not believe in giving the women no breaks, did y'all? Y'all didn't believe in giving the women no breaks. Mm-mm. We didn't no have cable. Break. We didn't have cable. <laughs> <laughs> come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. I said, baby, we ain't got to. We can't see the TV. I guess we create one. Come here. <laughs> Praise the Lord, somebody. Touch your neighbor and say, be fruitful and multiply tonight. All right, let's go. Oh, my God. Boy, lead attorney, what do you think about these brothers up here? They are amazing. <laughs> I, I need that in my life. All right, let me put y'all down so I can actually get to work. You know? Get to work, my guy. Yeah. Oh, before we get to work, I'm gonna keep y'all up while we do this. We got we get, we gotta play we gotta uh pay a little homage to some donations. Money is making it my name because I'm trying to be rich, trying to put away meals. Here comes the money. Here we go. Here comes the- All right, shout out to uh to the good fellas over there, singles by choice over there. Let me uh uh-uh, uh let me get their name right. Single by choices. I always get it wrong. Appreciate you, good brothers, for becoming a membership over here. Yeah, it's cheap over here to join my membership. What is it, 99 cent? Come on, brother can't get a dollar a month. Come on, support support the cause over here. Also, my girl, Raw B, is in the building and became a member. Thank you, Raw B. You know, that, you know that's my that's my um that's my secret boot crush over there. Raw mm. B. I can't say that, but I get in trouble. I can't be joking around because I might get in trouble. Somebody might get <laughs> mad at me. Lips, you like the you like them lips, but we'll talk about that later. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. <laughs> All right. I dodged the trap. What's up, my good brother with the five dollar super uh, super chat? Yeah, and of course, every time somebody drops a nickel on me, we gotta we gotta hit them with it. <laughs> Yeah, he got five on that. I appreciate that. And we got Almond Eyes with the $2 super sticker. And she go ahead and she donated her. These last $2. $2. I'm not yeah. going to lose. Come on. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I, I left myself. I'm sorry. <laughs> so thank you, guys. All right. I'm going to drop you guys, guys in the back. I'm going to get going. I'm going to bring you back up. So we had some fun. So I know. I, I, I hope I don't take off too many people. And I hope out of the fellas. Well, we gotta watch tonight. I hope, keep, I, you know, don't don't be like here, hold my beer and try to go fight somebody. We got some stuff to get into. Be right with you guys. Be right back. Woo! Oh my goodness, y'all! All right, so let's let's get this show on the road. We spent enough time, you know, uh, 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 cackling around. So let's get this show on the road, okay? Let me get this here uh, set up over here. All right. Listen, in my opinion, one of the most overly used phrases when you're talking about holding somebody accountable to something, one of the most overly used phrases that I can think of right now is the phrase, God gave me free will. And people say this as if it's a justification to engage in reckless behavior, including how you treat people. God gave me free will is not a damn hall pass for your nonsense. But it is used to attempt to checkmate somebody that's trying to hold you accountable 
for your nonsense. Now, I do understand, you know, grown folk, we tend to rage out um, against obedience. We, we, we try to, we rage out all the time against obedience. And the reason why we rage out against obedience as an adult is because we're adults and no adult enjoys the idea of having to be obedient to another adult. But how does that work if you are a Christian? How does that work if you are a Christian? Obedience is the cornerstone of the faith. Even Jesus, for you guys who don't understand, even Jesus had to practice obedience to God. And Christians are expected to spend their lives striving to be Christ-like. You are expected to spend your life striving to. That don't mean you're going to get there. We're human beings. But you are supposed to go ahead and put in the work. Yes, we fail. But that does not excuse you from making another attempt at it tomorrow. Now, for me, as long as God gave you free will, there's always seems to be an excuse to be disobedient. Now, the, let me go over a couple terms with you. Obedience, submission, cooperation. And I'm talking when you're talking to your woman. Obedience, submission, and cooperation. Those words, excuse me, pastor, those words might as well be bitch, whore, and slut to our woman. Because the reaction you get, the response you get when you talk to our women about obedience, submission, and cooperation, it's like calling her a derogatory name like a bitch or a whore or a slut. Excuse me, pastor. I know you know I talk like that. I just try not to do that much around you. Most of the fights between black men and black women, they're rooted in those, in those concepts. Now, listen, over the last several years, we've, we've, as a group, have witnessed a public examination of what's been going on with black folk, especially with our relationships with each other. And, and let me go back about two or three years. A charismatic figure named Kevin Samuels launched into the forefront and becoming the premier voice on this issue. His infamous phrase sent shockwaves through black folk, leaving most in a state of shock and in awe, especially our women, who heard these talking points and the message, and they acted like they were hearing it for the first time. And our women collective heads exploded with one infamous phrase. Ma'am, you are average at best. And it wasn't just shock that our people experience. There were cheers from black men who saw this as, wait a minute, somebody just said the thing that we've been saying in the confines of our barbershop, our man caves, cutting grass. Finally, the message is reaching a larger audience and the world will finally hear what we've been keeping to ourselves and whispering in the basements of our man caves and in, in the sanctity of our barber shops. But fast forward to the to um but fast forward to the unfortunate passing of Kevin Samuels. And now we found ourselves in a very, very, very different landscape. The conversation seems to have shifted or evolved into a blame game with fingers pointing in every damn direction that, that they can point in. The blame game has reached unprecedented levels. I am getting exhausted with the blame game. Even men are pointing fingers 
at previous generations of men uh, for the state of black families. So you got younger men pointing at the older men and the older men are pointing at the even older men. And then the mom men are pointing at the little young men. Our women are seeing us have these discussions and they're seeing us fight and blame each other. And their interpretations of these conversations are that we are whining, we are complaining, and we are being overly emotional. And they're thinking that we're not being productive. And then there's and they're having another excuse to question black male leadership. But here's the thing that our women cannot see. Most of our women have forgotten why Keith Sweat was a punchline and a genius. Keith Sweat, <laughs> yes, I know I'm talking about Keith Sweat. Y'all chill out. Just give me a second. I'll tell you why he why this is relevant. Shit. I'm not going all over the place. It's, this is planned out. I know what I'm talking about. It's planned out. Keith Sweat understood sometimes there's power in begging. Keith Sweat understood that. The thing that our woman can't see when they see black men having these discussions about our collective failures, black women don't recognize begging when they see it. They no longer have the ability to recognize begging because we don't have the key sweats of the world out there anymore that, that have taught them <laughs> what begging from a man looks like. They don't understand that right now, black men or black women are really wrapped up on a damn merry-go-round. You know, women, black women, once upon a time, and I can remember this, got to experience being worn down by a begging ass brother. <laughs> and men, I mean, I mean, was getting worn down. I mean, we would wear you down. And here, and you know, and you know what we would hit our women with when they would turn us down. We'd be like, baby, please, baby, baby, please. You know what they would tell us? You, you know, you know what the men would go when the woman be like, no, 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 no. We be like, oh shoot, there you go. That's what we would be do. And let me explain something, because now we all talking about the whole simp culture. Back back then, even when I was a young in my twenties as a teenager, men didn't mind begging, and his manhood wasn't condemned because men understood that. Because you know what? Because you know what? Back then, men, black men collectively felt that black women had something so valuable that it was worth begging for. So many of our women don't understand that no more because so many of our women don't understand what makes you valuable. It ain't your job. It's not your apartment. It's not your money. It's not you got your own everything. It's not I can do for myself. None of that nonsense makes you valuable to us to the point where we were doing what Keith Sweat was doing back then, which was bad. But y'all don't y'all don't get to experience that no more. And the main reason why y'all don't experience that no more, because too many older women, other women, tell you differently about what makes you valuable as ladies. And I know you ladies like to reject the notion. 
that all of those things that I mentioned, your apartment, your money, you got your own, everything I could do with myself, my car, my car. None of that is the thing that makes you valuable. You've been lied to. Oh, I say it, I say it again. You've been had. You've been took. You've been hoodwinked. Bamboozled. Let us stray. Run them up. This is what. So while our women, while our women are, are thinking, let me, let me get, let me figure this. While most of our women think what they're seeing with the men having these conversations is bitching, whining, complaining, sometimes you ladies label what we're doing as bashing out here on social media. What you don't understand is what you're really seeing is black men doing their level best to articulate how much we fundamentally miss the connections with our women. And how and to a degree we missed the fact that we we didn't mind begging for something that we found valuable you don't you you watching these conversations and you just don't understand what you're seeing we're doing it in a way that you don't understand and you don't recognize to a degree because a lot of you have forgotten about Key Sweat. Now, on each side of this conversation, uh, on each side of this conversation, there's a conviction that each side is right. And we're willing to burn the whole damn house down because each side think they're right and holding on to beliefs about who's to blame and who bears responsibility for where we are. Both of us, not both, both of us, B-O-A-F, both of us insist that the other is responsible and, and at fault. So let's talk about responsibility for a second. Check this out. In the United States, our court system has a method for determining responsibility. They have two standards to determine responsibility, preponderance of the evidence and beyond all reasonable doubt. Beyond all reasonable doubt is a is the highest standard of proof that you need to, 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 to assess responsibility. It means the prosecution, because beyond reasonable doubt is about criminal. So it means the prosecution must prove the, the defendant's guilt to a degree that no reasonable person could conclude that they did not do that. The other standard is preponderance of the evidence. And the preponderance of the evidence means that, 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 the, that the accusing party has the burden of proof to show that it's more likely than not, than not 51% of their facts need to be true. That's preponderance of the evidence. It's a slight tipping. It's more likely than not. And seeing as relationships issues, marital issues in general, in our system of governance, where we are placing the blame, we have to look at our issues from a standard of preponderance of the evidence, which basically means look at all of it, which basically means look at all the examples or the evidence that determine more likely than not. Those, so those who are looking to place blame or maybe responsibility for that outcome has to use that standard. So here's what I'm saying. It is my belief based on the preponderance of the evidence that we're in this situation because of the lack of willingness to cooperate, understand, or give grace. We will not be able to reclaim our lost ideals if we continue to do this. And my assessment is based on what we've been, my preponderance of evidence is based on where, where we have been and what we have evolved to over the last 60 years.
So tonight, I'm going to address a topic that is sensitive. I'm going to address a topic that is sensitive and personal. I'm going to talk about this topic from a theoretical perspective, and I'm going to talk about my personal experiences. The responsibility, we're going to be talking about the responsibility of a woman and a wife to her husband or her man and the potential impact of disobedience in her marriage and for the goal that leads to marriage. So we're going to be talking to women in general, wives and women who want to be wives. I got something I want to play for you real quick. Black women won't submit. My question to you is, what are you wanting them to submit to? Because most of you all are wanting women to submit to any and everything. And that is the problem. A woman will never submit to a man that she does not trust. Another issue is most of you are wanting women to submit when you haven't even made them a wife. It is not a girlfriend's job to submit to you. Submission belongs to the wife, not the girlfriend. So if you have not made her a wife, you are already out of order. Black man, I feel to go ahead. I'm going to bring you up just real quick. You got to unmute, brother. That's the demon. You, you don't submit to a boyfriend, correct? You don't submit. The Bible says, and I, when the pastor come up, we'll discuss it. The Bible says, he who findeth a wife findeth a good thing and favor with the Lord. Meaning, when I find you, you already have the characteristics of a wife. I don't have to build you. You're not a builder bear. Uh, but you already have those characteristics because your mother and your father have instilled those values into you. Now, it's amazing to me that this woman would get up here and say, um, we don't submit. We submit to husbands, not boyfriends. But I guarantee she ain't no virgin. And I guarantee you when she's in that bed and he tell her to flip over, hold her leg up. And he and he him on up in the corner. She's submitting to this. A, that's a that's a shame. You will submit to the penis, but won't submit to the man. I, I, I rest my case. You can go ahead. Yeah, I just had to. I wasn't done, but I had to bring you up because I saw. Boy, I was watching how animated you were getting black man on filter. Boy, I was like, oh, let me let me let. He got to get this out now. He got to get this out now. So, everybody, listen. Let's have a straightforward conversation about this. According to every uh, to multiple surveys and studies, uh, about 80% of black folk in the United States identify themselves as Christian. Damn near all of us identify as Christian. 80%. That's a good chunk. I don't care about the, the Jehovah this uh, or Brother Islam that. 80% of us identify as Christian. So let me let me say this with the population of Christians being being that high amongst black folk, how do a woman within that faith justify not following the directions that her faith set out on how to operate with the man she is supposed to be covered by or want to be covered by? The concept of a man being a woman's covering is primarily discussed in 1 Corinthians it's 11 and 3 through 16. It kind of talks about the covering a little bit. I'm going to read it. I'm not going to read 3 through 16, but I'll read a little bit of it for you. Pass it, get to it, to, to the nitty gritty of it, but I'm going to read it to you so you know. So you know. Let me let me, let me get this. Remove this. 1 Corinthians 11, chapter 11, 3 through 16. But I want you to realize that the head of every man is Christ. And the head of, head of the woman is man. Don't forget, 80% of y'all are Christian. This is your instruction, one of many. But I want you to realize that the head of every man is Christ and the head of the woman is man. And the head of Christ is God. For every man who prays or prophesies 
with his head covered, he dishonors, covered, dishonors his head. But every woman who prays or prophecies with her head uncovered dishonors her head. Who's her head? He does honors her head. We're not talking about that thing that encapsulates your brain. Verse three says, the head of the woman is man. So a woman who prays and prophesies with her head uncovered, uncovered, disobedient, I'm thinking that really means, dishonors her husband. But here's the thing, so many women and so many wives, they really don't believe this. They reject it. And they're, and they're reasoning when they're rejecting their instruction is God gave them free will. So here's one of the questions I'm going to ask pastor shortly. So God gave us free will. Is that a valid and justifiable reason to disobey scripture? Did I not just say, ooh wee, ooh wee. Here's for Ephesians 5, 22, 24. Wives, submit yourselves to your own husband as you do the Lord, for the husband is the head. One again, here's the second one talking about the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church, his body, which... He is the Savior. Now, as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to their husbands in everything. But you got free will. I'm going to talk to the pastor just a second about the wives who talk about their husbands are not believers or, or that their husbands are non-believers, so they don't have to submit. Submission is nothing more than willful cooperation. Mm, 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 mm. But let's talk a little bit about submission. Now, look, I got a clip from an old lady. Take heed to the message. Play two minutes of this clip today on her on her stream. I'm going to try. I'm, I gave her only two minutes of the clip because I, I didn't want take heed's head to explode. And I didn't want her to spend five hours up there ranting. But we're not going to spend five hours either. But I want to play what this lady is saying. This is an older woman. She has to be in her 70s. And she's advising. Her channel is to advise younger women. And here's the advice. I've been raised. But you, you have to remember that a man is a man is a man. So... The man is still wanting to be king. I don't care what color he is or what race he is. He still wants to be king and he still wants you to submit to him. You understand? And, uh, and you know, it's your free will. You know, whether you want to submit or not. Okay, that, this is the whole thing. You know, women are out here criticizing each other because independent women don't feel like they need to submit. Submit, and what does that mean anyway? Submitting. So that he can uh, tell you what to wear, tell you what to do, tell you what to say, talking to you rough when he decides to. And you just, you know, whatever. No, I say no to that. I say, now, I've been married twice. Twice to fail marriages. Because I will not allow a man to control me. No. No. I am a human being. I am an individual. I have my own mind. And to uh, 
to get involved with a man does not mean that I should shut my mind down just to appease him or to make him feel good about himself. You see, this is what it is. Uh, uh, some, some people think that uh, if you don't submit, well, then the other person is challenged. They're challenged because, because you won't submit to them. I don't understand why you have to submit to them. Uh, oh. I need somebody to explain that to me. Because now, now in my early relationships, yeah, yeah, you know, especially when I was in the church, yeah, I submitted. I on, on my first marriage, yes, I did. I submitted uh, to the first marriage. I submitted in some of the relationships, but every time I did, it did not turn out well. The other person took advantage of it. The, the partner took advantage of your submission. You see, because a lot of people in this world think that kindness is a weakness. So they take advantage of it. But then here, there are these dating people out here telling women, submit, submit, submit. And even when you go to church, they're telling you the same things. Wives, Submit to your husbands. Why? If your husband is a terrible person and nobody's saying that, why should you submit to him? And even if he is a wonderful person, ah. <laughs> again, why do you need to submit to him? No, 